There are two different types of people in your online program, and the better you understand them, the more likely you are to want to track two different retention rates inside of your program. I'm talking more about that in this episode. Just the other day, I was chatting with somebody who's been through my programs, and she was struggling because her retention rate had dropped slightly from the 98%, hello, amazing, that it typically was, to 96%. That got us talking about her audience, who are teachers, and it led to a conversation about right fit and wrong fit members. Then that same conversation came up when I was chatting with a client about how to evaluate the people that are requesting to refund in her program. So I knew I needed to share this with you. But when I do, it's going to seem super obvious, but may be overwhelming for some of you. If you aren't already tracking your refunds or you're not tracking your retention rate, I just want you to start there. You can go to memberltv.com to get a free retention rate calculator. That's where you want to start. If you are already tracking this, you're ready to dive deeper, what I'm going to share with you may not be wanting to track two different retention rates. Okay, so there's two types of people in your program. There's right fit people and there's wrong fit people. So let's talk about the difference. Right fit people are your ideal customer. It's somebody that you know you can provide value to and you've intentionally shaped your program for them. They're also aligned with your culture too. That's really important. On the other hand, you have your wrong fit people. These are people who are not your ideal customer or really anywhere close to your ideal customer. They're just not somebody that you're seeking to serve or provide value to inside the program that they are a part of. Or maybe they are that person, but they're not aligned with your culture. You need the combination of the two. So how do we end up with wrong fit people inside of our program? There's a few ways. Some of you can sell ice to an Eskimo. Sooner or later, that Eskimo is going to realize that they don't need that ice, right? You can convince a seven-year-old grandmother with a flip phone that she needs to launch an online community on Facebook, but sooner or later, she's going to realize this isn't for her. Now, nothing against grandmas. I am one myself, but you get what I'm saying. You're able to convince people who really shouldn't be in your program to be in your program. Now, some of you are making vague promises or have misleading marketing that doesn't align with the program or promise or the deliverables that you have in place. Now, that's a bigger problem that you want to address. Now, on the other hand, some of us are trying to get all of the sales. So we're convincing beginners, for example, that they need to be in our program. But the reality is that your program is for more advanced people. They need to have hit some milestones before they join. But you just want to get the extra sale, so you're convincing them that this is the place for them. If you teach an advanced knitting program, people need to understand the basics of knitting before joining, right? You're not trying to convince them to become a knitter, but oftentimes, We do, and then we wonder why they leave. Sometimes they were the right fit person, but their desire or status has changed and they're no longer a good fit. Maybe you teach English teachers and they retire or quit or they change the subject that they're teaching. Or maybe you teach people how to find a spouse and guess what? They got married. Woohoo! Maybe you help people who want to have a podcast and they've decided to take a full time job and not podcast anymore. Now, sometimes all of those things are in alignment. They are the person that you want to provide value to. They're a good fit for your program, except for the fact that they're not aligned with your culture, either because you think they're not aligned or they're not aligned. That could be because maybe you're a Christian and you talk openly about your faith and they're just against that. Or maybe you emphasize like a 40-hour work week that's really balanced and family first and they just want to hustle 80 hours a week. In any of these cases, Your program is not a right fit for this individual. You're not creating this program for them. You're not trying to serve them with this program. Now, often the mistake that business owners make is we see these cancellations or refund requests coming in and we get the feedback and we try to shape the program to fit their needs with very little regard to the majority of the people that love us or more importantly to your vision that you originally had for the program. So when someone cancels and you're going through the data, I want you to ask yourself, is this a right fit individual or a wrong fit individual? And put them in one of those two buckets because that's going to change how you look at that retention rate. It's going to change how you look at that individual and maybe even how you try and recover and bring them back into the community. 
Now, how do you identify if they're wrong fit or right fit? There's a few different ways you can do that. One of them is a survey, whether that's an onboarding survey where you ask them some questions about themselves or a check-in survey that you've done mid-journey for them or a cancellation survey, especially the cancellation survey. This should help you identify with just a couple of questions like asking why they canceled, if they were right fit or wrong fit. You can also identify this based on conversations or interaction that are happening in your support channel or your community. Maybe they've posted in the group about a shift that they're making in their life, right? Maybe they've emailed in and said that it's not a fit for them for whatever reason. And then I know some of you have implemented my recommendation of 15-minute support calls or concierge calls, and you can learn a lot on those calls as well. Now keep in mind, you won't always be able to figure it out, but whenever we can get additional data, and get additional insight on the people leaving our program, I wanna be able to do that. Doing this is actually going to help you get a better picture of what's really happening with the retention inside of your program. Because having a lot of wrong fit customers is inevitably going to lead to more cancellations, more refunds, lower retention, and lower average lifetime value. So when you break them out, you're going to be able to look at your ability to retain the right fit people, which is ultimately what you want. In fact, you may even want to track that retention rate separately if you can get enough data to do so. I will note this. If you are noticing a lot of wrong fit people in your program or leaving your program, you may want to have a chat with sales and marketing about how you can start to weed those people out earlier on in the buying process. Remember, the goal isn't to have everybody in our programs. It's to focus on the right people that we want to serve who produce the highest lifetime value and the most profitability in our business. But that's a whole nother episode. For now, I just want you to be thinking about what you already have in place that can help you evaluate your refunds and cancellations as either right or wrong fit customers so that you can get more insight into what's happening inside of your program. So take some time to do that and then evaluate your most recent cancellations and see what insight you learn.